This is part two in our series of lectures on section 2.3 and in this lecture we're going to talk about the distributive laws for indexed families of sets and prove one of them. We first recall some definitions from the previous video. If we let delta be any set and we let a sub i such that i is an element of delta be a family of sets indexed by delta and then we can define the union and the intersection of this entire family of sets. The union of all of the sets is the set of all x in our universe such that there exists an i in the indexing set delta such that x is in a sub i and the intersection of all of the uh, sets in our uh, indexed family of sets is the set of all x in our universe such that for every i in the indexing set delta, x is in a sub i. And so in order to say that x is an element of the union, it just simply means this. It means that there exists an i in the indexing set such that x is in a sub i. That is the working definition of union. And to say that an x is in the intersection of all of the sets it says that for every i in our indexing set, x is in a sub i. And that's what you take to be the working definition that x is an element of the intersection of all of the sets. So this theorem is what I refer to as the distributive laws for indexed families of sets. If in addition to all of the sets a sub i that we have above, we also give ourselves uh, a subset B of U, then the following uh, two properties hold. The first one says that if you want to intersect B with the union of all of the A's, that's the same thing as first intersecting B with, all, with each A separately and taking the union of all of those sets. The second one says that if you want to take the union of B with the intersection of all of the sets, that's the same thing as taking a typical set A and taking the union of B with that, and then taking the intersection of all of the resulting sets. Now we're going to write the proof of only part A in this video, and I'm going to leave the proof of part B for you to do as an exercise. Now the proof is done in the usual way. Uh, we, we want to prove set equality. And so what you do is you take a typical x in here, a generic x in here, and you prove that it's in here. And then in the second paragraph you take an x in here and you prove that it's in here. And so you just want to do that using working definitions. So just to get you started on it, when you take an x in here, what does it mean? Well, it means it's in B, and it's in this union. And what does it mean to say that it's in the union? Well, it means this happens. It means there exists an index I in delta such that it's in A sub I. So now we've got it's in B, and it's in A sub I for some I in the indexing set, and therefore it must be in B intersected with that particular A sub I, so in other words, there exists an index i such that it's in b intersected with a sub i, and therefore it's in this union. Okay, so that's the idea of how you prove that this is a subset of this, and the reverse inclusion is proved in a similar way. It uses nothing more than working definitions of intersection and the union of an indexed family of sets. So why don't you put your video on pause and see if you can write out the formal proof. And when you come back, I'll show you how I did it. Okay, so here you see the first half of my proof. I've written this at the top just to remind you what it is we're trying to prove. So, we first prove that the left-hand side is a subset of the right-hand side. So just look at the overall skeleton of what I'm doing before I actually go into the details. I give myself an x in the left-hand side, and lower down, 
you see that I was able to verify that it's also in the right-hand side, and therefore I have the right to say this. Okay, so that's the overall skeleton of, the, of this half of the argument. So let's look at the details. Let x be an element of this intersection. So at, the, at, at this point, we only see the intersection. We don't worry so much about this thing here. So what does that mean? That means it's in here and it's in the union. So now I write down what it means to say that it's in the union. And just so that you don't get too confused about this use of this I here, I'm going to use a different letter, J. Thus there exists an index J such that X is in A sub J. So since in, adi in addition X is in B, remember we said that here, it follows that X is in B intersected with AJ. A and so, in other words, I've shown that there exists an index j such that x is in b intersected with a sub j. And so, by definition, x must be in the union of all of the b intersected with ai's as i varies over delta. So now I've proved that we have this inclusion. Now let's look at the other inclusion. So that proof appears here. And Again, let's look at the overall skeleton before we look at the details. We next prove the opposite inclusion. So I give myself an x in the left-hand side here, and somewhere down the line you'll see that I've proved that x is in the other side, it's in this side, and therefore I've proven this, and then the desired result follows from 1 and 2. Okay, now let's look at the details. Let x be in this union. What does that mean? According to the working definition, there exists an index j such that x is an element of b intersected with aj. Now what does that mean? That means x is in b and x is in aj. Well, since x is in aj, it follows by definition that x is in the union of all of the a's because there exists an index for which it's in that particular a. And since, in addition, x is in b, uh, it follows that x is in the intersection of those two sets. Okay, then we've thus proven that we have this inclusion, and therefore the general result follows from 1 and 2.